What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got some very exciting stuff to do on the FJ today. We finally got in our rear seat and our seat belt, so we got to figure out that. I ended up going with four point harnesses. I'm going to do that front and rear and then we got our Corbeau seat right there. It's a little bench seat that's going to sit between the to shock towers in the rear. Uh, so originally I was planning on just welding tabs onto that crossbar for the seat belts, but I was looking in this manual here and I think it's just gonna be easier to do what they say right there and just wrap the, uh, the belt around the roll bar there instead of welding tabs on and doing it that way. We're just gonna wrap it around. It's gonna be much easier and we don't have to do any more welding. And then we gotta figure out our bar for the rear seats and then figure out those seat belts. And then we gotta pull this roll cage all the way out. We gotta weld this thing all the way in and get it painted. So that's a game plan for this video. We're gonna get started right now um, on, on seat belts. We gotta figure out the lower mounts. So I know I'm gonna get tons of comments on this. I've done some research on seat belts and roll cages. They say you want your belts mounted where your seats are mounted. Uh, I'm still mounted to the floor here. I really don't feel like redoing all of my mounts. I spent so much time on these. Um, and I don't know, with with everything tied into the cab here, this thing has like a ton of body mounts and with the tie-in kit from the frame here, we got it tied in there, there, you can see underneath, everything's tied into the frame. This body is pretty well married to the frame. So I'm not super worried about it. So what my research has told me is you can mount your upper mounts here on the roll bar and the lower mounts are fine going into the floor. Uh, I think this thing's definitely sturdy enough, this floor right here, especially where these mounts are. I'm just gonna make some mounts off of these mounts here on the outside and the inside is gonna be a little bit different because we got that center console in the way. So what I may do, is make like a crossbar that kind of ties both of these together. That's gonna to give it some strength and then we're gonna have our tabs coming off the ends of that mount there. So I think that'll be plenty strong. And then we also need to figure out a, a crossbar for the shock hoops. I originally was going to go here, but then I, you know, I got a comment on YouTube, honestly, that made me rethink that with having the roll cage kind of rubber mounted with the bushings on here. I think if I can if I can fit it if I can once we get the seat in and placed if I can work a bar to come around the rear seat we'll use that for our seat belt mounts and our tie-in for those shock mounts so that's kind of what I'm thinking um, but I don't want that rear seat weights so far forward. I mean, if I put that rear seat up here, you have no leg room at all. So either way, that seat, the back is gonna be pretty snug for, I mean, you probably have one adult, but I mean, two adults in a 36 inch wide bench is gonna be very snug. So either way, it's gonna be tight, but we're gonna make something happen. So let's get these lower mounts figured out. These uppers, like I said, we're just gonna do a wrap just right around the roll bar there and uh, seat belts will be done.
looking sweet on mounts. I got these ready to go. We're gonna drill through. The good thing is this front underneath has a support that runs all the way over, so that's doubled up. And then the back as well, where I made those holes, is doubled up as well. But unfortunately, I've come to the conclusion I'm not gonna really be able to tie these shock hoops together. I mean, they are right in the middle of that seat. Even if I go back this way and around the back, it's not gonna strengthen it at all. Just because having the tube straight this way, there's there's no rigidity, there's no strength in pushing you know, inward. So, I mean, I've seen millions of builds without them. I mean, I would like to tie them together, but the way this seat is set up, I don't really see a way to do that. And like I said previously, with the cage being mounted with you know the rubber bushings we have here, I don't know if I feel comfortable tying the frame, a solid piece of the frame into the cage, which is designed to move a little bit with those bushings. I don't think I really want to do that. So um, I think we're going to leave it. The good thing is, is it's welded inside and out, top and bottom. And I also put two gussets on the inside of that mount. So I do think that's going to be strong enough. I mean, it's the rear. There's not a lot of weight back here. So I'm not super worried about that. So let's get these holes drilled in and then my rear seat mount or seat belt mounts you can see bolt right here i put two holes and i put four holes for seat position so we can move this thing forward and back and as you move it forward and back you may want to change the position of that seat belt because you're supposed to have it like a 45 degree angle so if you move the seat all the way forward you'll want to use that front hole all the way back you want to use that rear hole so other than that like i said i think i'm back to just doing a crossbar between here and there for the the top part of the seat belts and then we will have to do one more mount in the center for the center uh, lap strap that comes down i haven't quite figured out what we're doing yet i may just run a bar from here down bolt it through the floor and then back up weld it into here and bolt it through the floor with some tabs on it that's kind of what i'm thinking but once we get the seat bolted in and belts on it we'll figure that out
Well, we are done with our seat brackets. Those turned out really good. What I did back here is both belts on the center are gonna have to mount right here. So we got a nice thick 3 8 tab there. Uh, I got holes in the sides out here. We might need some spacers to space that out a little bit just to get it away from the seat. But those gonna work perfect there. And then obviously the top ones, top of the shoulder belts are gonna mount along that bar. So we are really good here. Um, like I said, we can move the seat forward and back. Uh, we still got about a foot back here, so we can do some storage stuff back here. We can do some storage up here. I mean, there's still room. Also, underneath the seats there, underneath the, the front seats, especially, well, not the passenger, we got the fuel tank there, but driver's seat, we got plenty of room for some something under there. So I'm stoked with it. At this point, we are pretty much ready to pull. We got to pull the roof off. I want to pull these sides off. And I decided I'm going to try to do as much welding on this roll cage in the cab as I can. The good thing about this rig is, like I said, this windshield folds down, the roof comes off, and these sides come off. So we're basically, basically going to be left with a tub, and we're going to have room to almost every weld. Um, I'll probably end up pulling. I mean, these are just barely bolted in. So I'll pull the screens out, get those out of the way, and we'll probably, we should be able to weld most of this in. We do have to pull it out. I want to paint it all out just because, like I said, it is all bolt in. So so we do have the option to pull this cage completely out and paint it on the ground. It's going to be so much easier that way. And one other thing we got to do is powder coat all of our brackets. So we got that bracket there and then all of our rear seat brackets. I'm hoping those are all going to fit in the oven. That's the main reason. I made this one bolt on here is just, I mean, it makes it easier. It makes it adjustable if, you know, something moved when I was welding it. And I should be able to fit all this in the oven now that it's separate. So actually I might tackle that first. I might powder coat those real quick and then we'll move on to the cage. I mean, this cage is gonna take, there's so many joints in it. It's gonna take quite some time to weld out, but shouldn't be really that bad, it should be fun. Well, if you guys wanna get into powder coating but haven't yet because of the price tag to get started, I got some ideas for you. So I use a regular household oven. I got this thing uh, on Facebook. It was like 60 bucks. It works great for smaller stuff. Obviously you're not gonna fit, you know, a whole bumper or something in here, but it works great for the smaller parts I usually do. So that is a huge savings. As far as the powder coating gun goes, this one I use is a Redline Easy 50 I've been using this for years now. I've never had an issue with it. It sprays amazing. And you can get these for like 370 bucks. I'll have all this stuff linked down in the description box for you guys if you want to check any of it out also when you get to the point of needing some powder look no further than prismatic powders this place is amazing they seriously have every variation of every color known to mankind in a powder form and they have very good prices this stuff i mean the powder i'm using for these all these seat brackets is probably five bucks if that it's so cheap this stuff is like 10 bucks a pound and like i said i'll probably not even use a third a fourth a fifth of a pound on this is i mean you don't use that much it's very cheap very affordable to do it once you're set up like i said but you can cut a lot of costs getting set up and you can also make an oven pretty cheap if you if you just do a little research on what you need for the controllers and the elements and all that you can build one for very cheap so if you guys have been thinking about getting in a powder coat you might as well it's amazing coating it's super super strong it's very fast and most importantly it's so easy i mean you can't run the powder <laughs> you you can't really i mean you can put too much on but you're never gonna it's not gonna cause much issue i mean you can't run it, it it's always gonna look good it's a very forgiving coating so like i said all this stuff will be linked down in the description box for you guys if you want to check any of it out
Well, remember when I said everything moves when you weld it? Yeah, even with this cage completely bolted in everywhere, it still moved quite a bit. I'm very glad I didn't weld these in. And the reason why is because now that the cage is fully welded in, I just gotta cut these tacks off and just reset them on these, po or on these pads here. No, they're not gonna be perfectly centered, but I mean, they're not that far off. I think I'm gonna leave the fronts, but the back four, are maybe, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch, maybe 3 16 off. So that's uh, a little tip for you guys, I guess. If you are building a cage, just don't weld onto your post here or where it mounts. And then, unless you're, I mean, unless it's all welded, but if it's bolted in, and like me, I'm gonna pull this thing in and out, I'm gonna pull it out to paint it here shortly it's nice to be able to bolt it back in. So um, I'm just gonna pull this thing up a little bit, cut these tacks off, reset those, weld those in, and then we can fully pull this cage out and give it a paint job. Well guys, the roll cage is done, looking good. You can see, actually, this color looks pretty good on here. I was uh, was a little unsure of how it's gonna look. Well, we still haven't obviously got it in, but I do like the color. I think it's gonna actually look pretty sweet. Now, if you guys are curious on the paint, this is from Seymour. This is their, this, like a, it's almost like a steel. It's a stainless steel paint. It actually has stainless steel in it. I don't know, I've been using steel it lately on some projects. I really love this stuff, but it is like 35 bucks a can. This stuff I think is like 17, so it's about half the price. It sprays, it doesn't spray as good as steel it. Uh, it did have some spitting issues, like big globs would come out. And I think it's just mainly that when it has a stainless steel in it, I think that's half the problem because that stainless steel flake, I think in the paint actually just settles as you're painting. So the more I shook it, the better it sprayed. So if you're gonna use this stuff, shake it a lot. Like stop very frequently and shake it up. And that seemed to help, but I did do some testing on this before I spray the cage out and this stuff actually seems very strong. So they say you can use this direct metal, they say you can weld through it just like steel it, but I'm not so sure about welding through it with the primer that I put on. I did do the Seymour primer as well, but they say you can use this direct metal, but they say it's a lot stronger and it'll last a lot longer with a primer under it. So that's what we did, we did a primer and then a couple of coats of this stuff 
And I got my hopes high. It's supposed to be oil resistant, sunlight resistant, like there's good UV resistance to it. But we'll see. So far, I actually like this stuff. If you guys want to check this stuff out, I'll have it linked for you guys down in the description box. Well, we got more exciting stuff coming up for the FJ build. We do have paint coming soon, and I do need to do something with this tub. Now, I thought about sandblasting it myself, but I think I'm just gonna drop it off at a shop in town. I still gotta call them and see what they would charge me to do it. But I think it's just gonna be a lot easier just to drop it off and have them blast the inside and the underside. I do have that pressure pot, but it's just gonna take so long. It's crappy weather outside, so I'd have to do it in the shop. That means the shop would be an absolute disaster or I would need to like create like a sandblasting room. That's just, I don't know, I, I'm just gonna see what they charge. I think I might just go that route. But either way, before we do that, we got sliders to build. We still gotta tie in our front cage mounts to our sliders. And we got a few other things to do as well. So definitely got some fun stuff coming up. Well, anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Why don't you go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.